In a previous section, we saw how to add Redux to a React application, as well as how to connect our components to it so that they could get access to the data in the Redux store and dispatch Redux actions. And this relieved our components of the need to manage their own state, as well as made it much easier to share state between our components. We also saw how to use thunks to remove side effect logic from our components. So a main theme so far with our React ecosystem tools has been the separation of concerns. We want our components to worry about displaying the data we give them, we want our reducers to worry about making changes to the state, and we want our thunks to handle all of the side effects logic and server communication. And so far we've done a pretty good job of ensuring the separation of concerns, but there are still one or two things that are a little bothersome, and they might not be obvious at first. Let's take a look at the map state to props function for our components, and specifically how it's getting the data from the state by referring exactly to how certain data is stored in the state. At first glance, this might seem pretty harmless, and most of the time it is, but here's the problem. Getting the data we need from the state in this way requires our components, and more specifically our map state to props function, to have an intimate knowledge of how our data is stored in the state. Now this might not quite make sense with the way the state is set up right now, but to show you an example, let's imagine something for a minute. Let's imagine that instead of storing our to-do data directly in state.todos, and our isLoading data in state.isLoading, as we've been doing, we want to incorporate the isLoading property into the todos reducer and move the actual todos data into state.todos.data. This is something that we can absolutely do, and I've seen it done in many React applications. But the problem here comes up if we have multiple components that we're all referencing state.todos and state.isLoading directly, because now we have to go through and change all of them to reflect our changes to how our data is stored. What we could do instead is, rather than referring directly to state.todos.data or state.todos.loading or whatever it is that we're trying to pull out of the state, we create some simple functions called getTodos and getTodosLoading, and we use these functions in the map state to props for all our components. If we had created and used these functions from the start, incorporating the isLoading property into our todos reducer and moving the actual todos array into todos.data, or making any other modifications to how our data is stored in the state for that matter, all of this would be a simple one-line change. So at first it might seem a little silly to go through the trouble of creating separate functions just to avoid difficulties when doing something simple like changing state.todos to state.todos.data. After all, that would be easy enough to do just by doing a global find and replace in our project. But actually, selectors are part of something bigger. Here's what I mean. Oftentimes we want to pass our components data that requires a little bit of computation to obtain. For example, if we had separate to-do lists for the to-dos that were completed and to-dos that were incomplete, this would require either our components or our map state to props to include filtering logic, neither of which is ideal since it adds unnecessary complexity to our component files. And this all is another reason that selectors exist, to give us a place to put the logic for transforming data in the store into data our components can use. In the case I just described, we could simply have selectors called getCompletedToDos and getIncompleteToDos, each of which contains the logic necessary for filtering all the todos in the Redux store into specific sublists. And then we could use these selectors in our map state to props instead of putting the actual logic itself there. We'll look into this in more detail in coming videos. So now we know the basics of why we need selectors in a React Redux application, and the basics of what a selector is. In this video, we're going to create our first selectors and incorporate them into our application. We saw previously that selectors are meant to abstract away how data is stored in Redux, as well as give us a place to put logic for transforming Redux data into data that our components can use. We're going to start off by looking at the first purpose, abstracting away how our data is stored in Redux. If we open up our to-do list component, we can see that in the map state to props function, we're referring directly to how our data is stored. What we're going to do is take these two things, state.todos and state.isLoading, and create selectors for them. So inside our todos directory, let's create a new file called selectors.js. And then inside this file, we're going to create a function called getTodos. So we'll say const getTodos, and it'll take state as an argument, and return the location in our state 
that our to-dos are stored. So it'll just say state.todos. And likewise, we're going to do the same thing with is loading. We'll say const get to do's loading state, and we'll say state dot is loading. And then we'll export these two selectors so that we can use them elsewhere. So the next thing we're going to do is bring these selectors into our to-do list component. So let's open up our to-do list component again. And up at the top, we're going to import the selectors we just created. So we'll say import get to do's and get to do's loading from selectors. And the way we're going to use these is down in map state to props, instead of referring directly to state dot is loading or state dot to do's, we're going to replace these references with the selectors we just created. So for is loading, we'll say get to do's loading and call it with state. And likewise for to do's, we'll say get to do's and call it with the state. And since we connected our new to do form as well, and it's using state dot to do's, we're going to import our get to do selector. Import get to do's from selectors. And we're going to replace this reference to state dot to do's with get to do's from state. And if we run our app and look at it again, npm run dev, we should see that our app works exactly the same as before, except now it's using selectors instead of just referring directly to how data is stored in the state. So now that we have our selectors created and incorporated into our application, let's take a look at how this allows us to modify the structure of our data in the Redux store without disturbing our components whatsoever. Previously, I mentioned that one of the things we might want to change about our Redux store is to incorporate our isLoading reducer into our todos reducer. This would make it more self-explanatory, for example, if we had other resources, such as users, that we needed to load from a server as well. This would require us to have another isLoading reducer for loading users, or whatever other resources we needed to have a loading indicator for. So what we're going to do then is have a single todos reducer, which stores the current todos array in the Redux store, as well as whether or not the app is currently loading todos. And in order to make this happen, we're going to store the todos array in state.todos.data, which is going to be our todos. And we're going to store the loading state in state.todos.isLoading. So what this means is that we have to combine our is loading and to do's reducers like this. I'll show you how. First of all, the initial state that we're going to start off with, we'll define a separate constant for that. We'll say const initial state equals, and it's going to have is loading, and that'll initially be false, and data, and that will initially be an empty array. And then we're going to set the default value of state to this initial state. So now we're going to go through each of the cases in our switch block here and replace it with the appropriate logic. So for create to do, we're still going to get the to do from the payload, but instead of simply returning state.concat, what we're going to do is use the spread operator to get the rest of the state untouched. And then for data, we're going to say state.data.concat with the new to do item. And moving on to remove to do, we're still going to keep this to do to remove statement here. But instead of simply returning state.filter, we're going to return and use the spread operator to get the rest of the state. And then for data, we're going to say state.data.filter. And that's all we need to do for that. Now moving on to mark to do is completed. We're going to leave this untouched. And instead of simply returning state.map, we're going to add dot 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 state using the spread operator again. And then for data, we're going to say state dot data dot map. And we're going to indent this a little more. And that's it for mark to do is completed. So now when we get down to our load to do success, load to do is in progress and load to do is failure. Only now do we have to start worrying about our is loading reducer up top since these cases are shared in this one. So for load to do success, for example, 
What we're going to do is instead of returning just to do's, we're going to use the spread operator to get the rest of the state. And then inside here, we're going to say is loading and set that to false. And then we're going to set the data in the state to the to do's that we just loaded successfully. And if we move down to load to do's in progress, what we're going to do here is add a return statement that says spread operator state. And we're going to set is loading to true here. And finally, for load to do's failure, we're going to say return dot 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 state is loading false. So that's definitely a bit long winded there. But now what happens is we can remove this is loading reducer completely. And we have to go to store and remove it from here as well. And if we run our app now, it's going to break because our selectors are expecting the wrong data format in our Redux store. Now, the beauty of selectors, however, is that all we have to do now is change these two functions. So for get to do's, instead of saying state.todos, we'll say state to do's dot data. And instead of state dot is loading, we'll say state dot to do's dot is loading. And now if we refresh our app, it'll work perfectly again, even though we only made those two changes after that huge refactor of our reducer. Previously, we saw that selectors can help our components be independent of the exact structure of data in our Redux store. Now it's time to take a look at their second purpose, to give us a place to put the logic necessary for transforming bare Redux data into more specific data that our components might need. In order to make this example more effective, Let's say that we're going to make a change to our application. Instead of having a single to-do list that displays all of our to-dos, let's say that we're going to change our application so that we have two separate lists, one to display the completed to-dos and one to display the to-dos that we haven't completed yet. Now this change requires us to perform a little bit of logic to transform the data contained in our Redux store, which simply contains a list of all our to-do items, into lists of our completed or incomplete to-dos. Now, our first instinct with this situation might be to perform this logic inside our map state to props function. But now that we know about selectors, we can imagine that selectors might be a better place to put this kind of logic. So we're going to go back to our selectors.js file and create some new selectors. The first one will be called get incomplete.